Amen. This is the True Worshiper, October 2020. I got a good one for you today, saints. We're going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer. I would like to explain the Lord's Prayer to you and help um, a lot of you who don't understand this prayer to understand it. And also, when the disciple, one of the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus told them how to pray. Amen. Told them which prayer to pray. If we go to Matthew, if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start at the fifth verse. Now, I know that when you're praying this prayer, it starts off with our Father who art in heaven. And I understand that if you're from Detroit, California, New York, you don't talk that way. You know, in the United States, in this country, we don't use that type of language. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy. You, you need to understand all these words. So I want to break this prayer down for, for a lot of you today so you can be blessed. Because just think about it. The Son of God who came here and gave his life for us, who paid the penalty for our sins to keep us out of the lake of fire, to keep us from dying and going into hell, gives us a golden nugget. He says, when you pray, pray like this. Amen. So I want to give you some understanding. Also, I'd like to share with you, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have a playlist, a playlist on how to be blessed in the last days. So you have to subscribe. You hit that playlist. I mean, hit that subscribe button. Go to my playlist. And um, it would give you lots of videos, lots of videos that you're not going to probably see if you don't hit that playlist button. So hit that playlist button, subscribe, and get blessed. Amen? Amen. So this video that I'm making is going to go into the playlist as well. So I want you guys to get this. So here you go. Now... Jesus' disciples had seen him praying many times. They must have made the connection between Jesus' intense prayer life and the power he showed in every aspect of his life. So they're looking, they're starting to think, maybe this power that he has has something to do with his prayer life. Mm -hmm. So let's go to Matthew chapter 5. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 6, starting at the fifth verse. Now let's look at this. I'm reading from the NIV. I'm not reading from the King James Version. I'm reading from the NIV, the New International Version. And what, what that means is this. I'm going to read this to you in the language uh, that we speak in the United States other than Spanish, okay? English. I'm going to give you, give you um, this word on the, with the language that we speak here in the United States, all right? Okay. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. This is the... Matthew chapter 6, starting at the fifth verse, it reads, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received, excuse me, their reward in full. Now, this is... Yeshua speaking. This is Jesus. This is the Son of God. This is the Messiah. This is the Savior that is speaking. He says, 
And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your closet. Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father in heaven who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's the first thing you have to do. Go into your room, close the door, and pray to God, to Yeshua, who is unseen. Can't see him with these eyes. Do this in private. Amen? And then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Have you ever heard someone pray like that? They just go on. Two, three, four, five, ten minutes. Babbling. Thinking they're going to be heard because of many words. Mm -mm. Jesus says, do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, knows what you need before you ask. He knows what you need before you ask him, saints. Then Jesus says, then Yeshua says, if you notice, why are you saying Yeshua and Jesus? Because it's his Hebrew name. I don't want to offend my brothers and sisters out there. They don't want to hear this because I'm not saying Yeshua. If I say Jesus, that's not his name. I mean, you know, to those who are sensitive, I'm trying to be sensitive now. If you watch my videos, you know that how I used to be things I used to say. So I'm just being considerate because I want you to get blessed. Amen? So Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus or Joshua. Okay? Yeshua. Jesus, the Savior, God's only begotten Son. That's who I'm talking about. That's who's speaking in Matthew chapter 6 starting at verse 5. And right now, I'm at verse 9, and Jesus says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Amen? What does that mean? Our Father in heaven. Now we're going to talk about, I want to talk about God's characteristics and his attributes. Our Father in heaven, fatherly love. What does that mean? Our Father in heaven. God is a loving, compassionate Father who gives life, provides for, and protects those who trust him. This is why Jesus is telling us to pray this way. And then the other verse goes, Hallow be your name. Now we're talking about holiness. That word hallowed, that's talking about 
holiness. To hollow means to make holy. To hollow God's name means to honor it as holy and sacred. Okay, let's go to the next verse. Your kingdom come. We're talking about sovereignty. God has supreme power and authority over everything in heaven and earth. So we're saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that verse mean? We're talking about the authority of God. God's perfect will is always being done in heaven. His perfect will is always being done in heaven. But on earth, human free will results in evil. We use our free will, but the outcome is usually evil. We ask that God's will would take the place on earth. That God's will would take place on earth instead of our will. Let's go to the next verse. Give us today our daily bread. Amen? What's the meaning for that? What's the meaning of that verse? Give us today our daily bread. God is able to provide for all our needs. The Greek word for bread represents not just food, but every physical thing we need. So give us today our daily bread. It's not just talking about food. It's talking about physical things we need as well. So when you're praying this prayer, you're not only asking for God to supply food, but for th physical things you need. If you need a home, if you need transportation, if you need a healing, mm. and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our deputors. What does this have to do with mercy? Where we ask God to forgive the wrong we have done, God will forgive us only as much as we forgive those who have injured us. God is merciful and he expects us to be also. And lead us not into temptation. Now we're talking about protection. We pray for protection from all the things that trip us up and undo us. The Holy Spirit gives us strength to withstand temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Some of us say, and deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. What does this verse has to do with? Have to do with deliverance. God's deliverance from enemies is a legitimate concern that we all should have. We can be confident in our prayers for deliverance. Because we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, through Yeshua. Amen? So when you're praying this prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Some, some, the same prayer 
if you're reading in the King James Version, it says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to share that prayer with you because prayer is important. And what makes this prayer so important is that Jesus told us to pray this way. I tell you, practice this prayer. Our Father in Heaven is talking about God as a loving and compassionate Father to those who trust Him. Hallowed be your name. Has to do with God's name being holy. Hallow means to make holy. God's hallowed be thy name means to honor God's name. God's name means to honor it as holy and sacred. That's right. Your kingdom come. God has supreme power and authority over everything in heaven and earth. So, so you see, when you're praying this prayer, I want you to visualize the understanding that you're and knowledge that you're receiving right now when you get on your knees and pray. When you're praying this prayer that Jesus says when you pray, pray this way. It's a beautiful thing. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's perfect will is always done in heaven. But you now you want God's perfect will to be done right here in your life on the earth. Amen. You want his perfect will to be done on this earth. Not just calamity and, and, and tragedy and punishment and judgment and storms and earthquakes and suffering and famine and pestilence you don't want to just sit here and suffer that all the time year after year month after month you could pray the Lord's Prayer and ask God's perfect will that is done in heaven to be done right here on the earth where you're standing so it is a good thing to know what you're saying when you're praying. Amen. Listen, that's all I have for you today. I thought it was very important, very important to talk about the Lord's Prayer because a lot of people can't get with it. They'll pray some something else. They'll pray something else. They'll pray like the pastor's praying behind the pulpit. They'll ask somebody to pray for them. But then Jesus says, if you want to have power to overcome, if you want to have power to stand, the disciples, his disciples was watching him 
that he was still away and pray. They don't know what he was saying. But then he told him what he was saying that gave him strength. He says, don't pray standing up in the synagogue. Don't be praying standing up in these buildings called churches where you can be seen. He says, no, when you pray, go behind closed doors where nobody can see you but Yeshua, but Jehovah God, but Jesus. And he's going to reward you. But I want you to know what you're praying. I want you to know what you're saying. Amen. Hey, listen, that's all I have for you today. You can find the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Starting at the ninth verse. But if you want, that's where the Lord's Prayer starts. But if you want to understand why you should pray this way, start at, go to Matthew chapter 6 and start at the fifth verse. Amen. And Jesus is going to explain some things to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you, Lord, for leading me to tell my brothers and sisters out there and all my subscribers and those who are, who are planning to subscribe, please check this channel out. It's very informative. You'll be blessed. This is how to be blessed in the last days. God bless you. I'll see you soon.